11th grade uh, one year and then take the score of the 11th grade the following year. It's not the same group of students, but they use it as a comparison. And that's what that five indicates there. That's the possible amount of points. So those are, that's all the measures. And then you can see the possible amount of points that you can get. Um, the uh, ultimate is the 100 points. So you can score uh, up to 100, and that's considered your composite index score. On the basis of that index score, then the students of the uh, schools are placed in one of those categories. So it goes from prevented to leading to typical to warning, focus, and priority. So the numbers that are here are the composite index scores. For example, a commended school needs to have a total uh, points uh, uh, equal to or in excess of 77. A leading school has to be equal to or greater than 70, less than 77. And your typical school, which there are, are many in the uh, state of Rhode Island, has to have be greater than or equal to 50, uh, less than 70. The warning category also has a composite index score, total points less than 50, but all of these other factors are also considered. So it's, um, even, even um, participation rate, if your school-wide participation rate is less than 95%, you become a warning school as well. So school attendance is important. The focus um, schools and the priority schools are the lowest levels. And they have two criteria for the um, focus. That's the subgroup of gaps that I was talking about against the reference groups and the percent of proficient points, which is um, achieving a four on the state testing. And then for the priority schools, those are the eight lowest scho uh, schools in the state of Rhode Island. And then all PLLs, PLA schools, me, which are persistently the lowest achieving schools in the state. So once again, that uh, participation rate is important. A subgroup is considered to not meet its target in a content area if there is a sufficient number of students in the subgroup, but at least 95% of them were tested. And then if, as far as all students in the subgroup, either in reading or math, if there is not 95% participation in that test, and that's the test taking itself, then it can become a warning school. This just explains what I explained before about the subgroups um, having their, their own annual measure, measure, measurable objectives and how it's cut in half and how they have the increments going along. Uh, the other um, important thing is that uh, there are two uh, categories that have been added, Pacific Islander and multiracial. Uh, this is to match the federal regulations and how they label uh, subgroups. A little bit hard to see on here, but I just wanted you to see that we are still getting our report cards for our schools and for the district at each level. This is the elementary level, and this shows which targets have been hit. And as you can see here, um, if you look at all the yes cate um, the category that had the yes in it, um, at the elementary level we have hit all our targets except for uh, in le in reading and math for the special education subgroup. Same thing with the middle school. We've hit all the targets there. The important thing to point out on the school report cards is they do allow a margin of error uh, for consideration here. So though you, you might see a target and you say, well, we didn't exactly get to that top target, target um, it's because of the margin of error. However, in the classification system, the measures that I just talked about, they do not allow uh, a margin of error. So if you don't hit it, you don't hit it. And at the uh, high school level, in reading, all targets were hit. In math, we had a, uh, a few of the no's that would be, in the, again, in the special ed population and as well, the school-wide population as well. This is a summary of the seven uh, areas of classification and how we did as a district. So on the top, you can see the possible amount of points. For example, total points was 100 on the second column. So at the elementary level, uh, we, we averaged at uh, 60 points out of 100. The middle level, 63, and the high school, 65. The state explains that if, you, if you're close to 50% of the possible points in the category, it's fairly good right now. 
So for the, our percentage of proficiency out of 30, we have a 17, 17, and 18. And then out of the subgroup, uh, possible 30 points were at 19.5, 15, and 18. The progress towards targets, that was only worth 10, and we were at 8, 8, and 6. So that's actually fairly good. And then the percentage in distinction, those are um, reaching a 4 again. And we had, that was, this is only based on 5 points. So at the elementary level, it's 4 out of 5. Um, at the middle level, it's actually 5 out of 5. So they split the highest for that. And at the high school, it was 3 out of 5. Excuse me. The following uh, column is the growth. That was the one that I mentioned as far as um, comparing academic peers. That can only be done at the elementary and the middle level because, um, because it's from grades 3 to 7 because we don't have a cohort at the high school except for um, grade 11. You can't do that and you, you don't have a measurement there. Um, but you do have the comparison in the last column. That's that change from the scaled score from one year to the other score. That's a 3.5 for the high school. And the graduation rate, we actually got an extra point because our graduation rate exceeded the rate of the uh, state. So we got one extra point there. These are all of the schools and their actual composite index scores. And so in our district, we have one commended school, we have two leading, we have four typical, and um, one warning. And I do want to point out on that one warning that we have, this, this school, the scores are there. The gold color that's there shows the district. And you notice that the school that's in warning, Fishing Cove School, if you look at the um, comparison, in almost all categories, they're just about right there. The cutoff point for this uh, classification, and to be in the next classification of typical, is 50, and they were at 48.5. So it doesn't matter even if you're point, uh, like point three points below, uh, you, you just don't make it because it's a cutoff. So that's, uh, that's the way it goes. The intervention for warning schools, first of all in the white, all um, schools are doing these, um, these interventions for improvement. So we have the school-wide transition to the Common Core. We also have um, the use of data and the use of the instructional management system that I shared with you at one of the presentations during the last school year. And then we also have the educator evaluation system. So all schools in the state of Rhode Island are using some form of uh, those improvements. Uh, a school in warning also has to have us implement a targeted instruction. And that school has already been um, having conversations with their staff regarding uh, their status. So warning schools will implement a plan for improvement, but on a limited scale and without intensive ride oversight. The two lower categories have tremendous um, expectations, and they have categories, and they have to choose one from each category, and it's a tremendous amount of oversight for that. So our next steps, uh, first of all, meeting with Ride, we've already completed that. We met with the statisticians. Uh, we also met with um, one of the uh, chiefs from, the, um, from Ride, and uh, we had extensive emails back and forth to confirm some of our statistics to make sure that the schools were correct. Uh, we've also met with each uh, principal and gone through the, um, every single measure and how those measures were calculated so that they fully understand um, their means of improvement. Aligning our school improvement goals at each, uh, each school is going to be aligning their school improvement plan with our district strategic plan. Also aligning their student learning objectives for themselves, the uh, building leaders, and the staff and planning interventions and supports, and then, of course, monitoring progress following that. And that's it. Any questions? Thank you. 
you ask anybody about the success of the school and who really knows what's going on in the school, if they're honest, they'll tell you it's a chosen because they live in the community, they spend money in the community, they send their kids to the local school, they make their buildings before and after school. They're the ones that keep the buildings safe. They're the ones that keep it safe for our students. So that begs the question of why you now decided to outsource that responsibility to a company that's 955 miles away from North Cape Town, Rhode Island. It begs the question, because quite frankly, as you know, if you cut their salary and benefits by 30% by forcing them to go to this company, and a question I would have for you if there was a direct I understand you told them that once you lay your law fired and whatever you did, if you had to go with this company, because you're going to fucking spike the unemployment rate. So if you cut people's salaries and benefits by 30%, then you're going to fight your unemployment rate. They had really no choice. But the truth of the matter is, if you look at studies drug out of privatization, you're going to end up with a huge turnover. You're going to lose that continuity, and you're going to lose the connection between the kids, the custodians, and the community. That's what this school is about. That connection that you are forcing to lose. But you know, I'm always amazed after the discussion, but I'm always amazed that people in power, whenever they think they need money, they always go for the people that make the lowest rate. Go after people, cut their salary and benefits by 30%, force them to know families who live in the community, work in the community, and spend money in the community towards poverty. I don't think... ...business manager, among others, who says, well, we need the money. So has you, has you asked the business manager, the superintendent, the special ed director, to take a 30% cut? They make the most money, and a 30% cut to them certainly doesn't hurt as much as a 30% cut to the associates. I'm appalled at what you've done. You have the power to change. You have a 90-day window. A window in which you can reverse the decision. Go into a private company, and again, I'm going to repeat it, 955 miles away from the center. You have no, really will have no control over it. Losing that community connection, and believe me, you will. Losing the interaction that custodians have with students is a vital to the education process. Yes, administrators are very important. Yes, salaries are very important. That's very, very important. But so are the custodians that keep these buildings clean and safe. In the end, with the privatization plan, you're really not going to save money. Five, ten years down the road, it's going to cost you as much as if you kept it here, but maybe that's not a political consideration. I think you should just take a hard look at the long term. In fact, the custodians today, you the session, met your financial demands, but you need the power to go after the leadership plan. And let me tell you, they're not the leadership plan. It's a fight to the beginning, because it's wrong what you're doing with these people. It's wrong what you're doing with these people. Thank you, Michelle. Your time is up. I'm going to ask you... Financial reasons down the road. I'm going to ask you for the community that is not pink down. The community that's not pink down. People who can see the urgency. Nancy Durango is the next person up, and then it is the Griffith Falls.
That letter, that letter talks about how privatization was the goal from the beginning. So even if the audience members leave, that letter is important for all of the committee members to understand and read. And thank you, Mr. Mudge, for writing that letter. Let me just add, let me just add, and let me just add that I have five of you. Mr. Mudge. On the same topic. Okay. 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 Mr. Welcome to the club. It is Mr. Mr. Crawley's time to speak. Mr. Crawley, Mr. Crawley you may not have to speak. No, Mr. Mudge. Mr. Mudge, it is not your time to speak. It is Mr. Crawley's time to speak. I'll pass. Okay. Am I back on? Yes. So, again, having been through a lot of these things, I understand how this process works. But let me just say this to you, because I know you have a lot of work that you need to do. You know, this isn't simply about cost or price. Because if you make it about that, that is nothing but cynicism. And I know that none of you want to sit up there and go through this type of meeting simply because of cost. All right, Oscar Wilde talked about how, you know, a cynic is the type of person who knows the cost of everything and the value of nothing. Why would you put yourselves through this, and this is mild, for cost? All right, if the people that we represent and we know, and I know you care about them, lost so much in this process, $13,000 for each one of these 26 families, why would you put yourselves through this on a regular basis? Because that's what this is about. Why would you tear this community apart for dollars and cents? I mean, are you that cynical? Have you descended to that level where you're going to have to worry about people coming up to a, a podium and a stage, taking your picture while you're reading the newspaper, and having this turn into a battle royal? Because every community that has done this has faced audiences like this, teachers, firefighters, Community members against their politicians. Why? Because of dollars and cents. So some corporation from Tennessee that's 950 miles away can put that money in their pocket. Look at the people that are sitting next to you. Can you look at them in the eye and feel proud about the decision you've made? Why? I want you to think about that and then look at these people. These people are going to be able to walk out of this hall today, hold their head up high, because they know that they've done the right thing. Are you going to be able to do the same thing? I don't think so. Thank you, Mr. Carley. 
George Nee, and then Mary Churchill De Silva. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. My name is George Nee. I'm the president of the Rhode Island AFL-CIO, and I was struck earlier today or tonight when we all stood together and we said the Pledge of Allegiance together, and it ended with, what did it end with? It ended with liberty and justice for all. Yet, I didn't hear anybody continue and say, except for the 26 custodians that work for the North Kingston School Department. We said liberty and justice for all. Your decision, which can be reversed, your decision by taking away the jobs of these 26 custodians commits a grievous injustice to them, their families, and this community. By taking away their jobs, you take away their liberty to feed their families and to participate in this community. Now, I'm out of school for a few years. I want to switch subjects here for a minute. We used to do homework. I think we still do homework in schools. I hope we do. My kids did. You didn't do your homework. You failed. You took the homework home. You watched television. You played video games. You did something. But you didn't do your homework. You didn't do your due diligence. You didn't study the track record of this company to see what their record is across the United States of America, hiring criminals in some cases to go to work in the school department. You didn't even know that they had an agreement across the country with another union. Did you figure that into your dollars and cents when you did your calculations? Did you do your due diligence? Did you do your homework? I think you failed as a school committee. You failed these. You failed in your obligation to do due do, 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 do diligence, and you failed these 26 custodians who have showed up every day, done their job, done their due diligence, performed admirably in this community, and made this a great school system. I read a book recently, and I was struck by one little statement at the end about a character. It said, everybody counts or nobody counts. You can reverse your decision. You can do your due diligence, and you can turn it around make sure everybody counts, and make sure there is liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nee. And after Mary Churchill de Silva, Kevin Dubois. You are, Mary. I am Mary Churchill De Silva. I live at 104 Butternut Drive. I'm the mother of three North Kingstown graduates and two Eagle Scouts. And I'm a paraprofessional for the North Kingstown School Department. Let me say how very intimidating it is to stand here and tell you what I think. But I don't stand here alone. I speak for many in this room. And for, the, uh, and for many others in our union. I hear of many problems with a lack of money. Where to find the money? Is it true that the administration was issued a 3% raise and our superintendent received a bonus? This at a time that the custodians have lost their jobs for the North Kingstown School Department and their benefits. What's left of the support staff are being subjected to a significant increase in their health care cost, or no health care at all, and a significant decrease in staffing at some schools? It is difficult to understand how we, the North Kingstown Educational Support Staff, have become the population to exploit. Every custodian I speak to feels discarded 
disrespected, and afraid to complain. Some say to me, these GCA people are not very nice. We offer words of comfort as if there's been a death in the family. As paraprofessionals, we don't know what the future holds. We all feel discouraged. We are the staff that coaches students through math, reading, holding a pencil, social studies, tears of frustration, lunch, hangnails, recess, accidents, scraped knees, toileting, writing, fractions, order of operations, counting the Underground Railroad, the alphabet, managing hundreds of students through the hallways to the buses, lunch and recess, out of meltdowns and back into the classroom. We do make a difference in the children's lives and interact with them every day. We are highly qualified and our qualifications are not indicated in our incomes. In my mind, it is unconscionable to have given people at the top a raise and bonuses in this tough economic environment. If this was at the suggestion of our superintendent, it shows a lack of res respect and leadership to those he's supposed to lead. What is the cost of administration receiving a raise? Perhaps you could vote to rescind that decision as you did to the paraprofessionals. Let me tell you, treating the support staff this way is not the way to build a learning community. Thank you. Kevin Dubois and then Joyce Palm. Thank you, Ms. Page, for the opportunity to speak. My name is Kevin Dubois, and I'm one of your educators at Davisville Middle School for the past 15 years. I've also had the pleasure of educating two of your children over the past several years, and they were excellent students. And I remember the moments where we spoke about their progress, and you asked how the class was going, and I felt that you respected my opinion then. So I'm asking you to listen to what I have to say, and you respect my opinion now as well. They know, you know me that I have never shirked from speaking about something that I feel is important. And what we've heard in the last several people's comments, I feel saying it's important is an understatement. Here locally in North Kingstown, I have severe professional and philosophical concerns that you are going to go with this company. Given their track record, given what's going to happen to the custodians and the rest of the paraprofessional and ESP union and the people that are going to be in my building that I have to work with to do my job to educate your children and the children of North Kingstown. Nationally, for the last several years, I've had the pleasure to represent educators and staff members at the national level at the conventions that we go to in the summer. And I've spoken to people from across the country, from many different states, New England, the South, Midwest, you name it. And I have yet to hear one good report about this company and its practices, or any company of its type at all, whether it be dollars, service, the fidelity of their promises, or their work ethic in the buildings themselves. I have yet to hear one positive aspect of having privatized in these areas, not one. And I don't say that because I'm a union representative and proud of it. I don't say it because I have a vested interest in it, because I don't. I say it because that's what I've been told, and I believe the people who told me that, and I believe it to be true. And I think it would be a detriment to North Kingstown to continue in this direction. I know you have the responsibility to exercise due diligence in this community to provide the highest education and the best education you can possibly in our school systems. That does not always just mean dollars. It would be, I think, a strong, well-informed, professional decision to take time to hear what people have said, to read the proof that's out there, not just that's been presented from us, but that is out there in black and white to be seen that this is not a good decision professionally, monetarily, or philosophically. And I think exercising due diligence, you can go back to the public and say, look, 
we really went to the wall on this in our negotiations, in our looking to privatize, and we went in that direction, but there's been a lot of information that's been brought to your attention before then and since then. And I really think you would have a lot of legs to stand on to say to the public that we've reconsidered our decision, and at this time we're going to choose not to privatize for many different important professional and educational reasons. I would ask you to really go back and talk about that, and I ask you personally, for those of you who know me, to really give this thought and consider reversing your decision. Thank you. Joyce Ham, and then um, Aaron uh, ben Benavides. Hi, good evening. I really didn't plan on speaking this evening. Uh, my name is Joyce Hand, and I live at 90 Oak Tree Drive. I've been a North Kingstown resident and a voter since 1972. Um, I've been a paraprofessional in the North Kingstown School District since 1999. I've worked at the high school since the day it opened, um, right after 9-11. And every time I come to work in the morning, I look at this beautiful building and the shine on the floors. It's just, it puts a smile on my face every morning I come to work. I look around, everything's so clean. I'm really upset tonight because it's the first time I've been in the building since the um, custodians have been outsourced. I came in the door, the side door next to the offices with my husband, and within about 10 seconds, we're looking at each other and saying, what is that smell? What is that smell? And if you could communicate back to me, I would be asking you, did you notice the smell? Did anybody up there notice the smell when they came in? I, I don't know what it is, and I, I have no idea what it's attributed to, but it hit me within 10 seconds of walking in the building. Then I, when, I, when I was coming in the auditorium, a gentleman handed me a flyer, and I looked down. I didn't really see the flyer, but I saw all the black scuff marks on the floor outside the door. That was really disturbing to me. This has been, what, 44 days? 44 days the building has gone down in 44 days to what it looks like tonight? I would think that GCA would want this building to shine tonight, knowing that their contract is being so scrutinized. Why wouldn't they want this building to be beautiful? If this is the best they have, I'm a little concerned. What is the building going to look like after they get the contract in 90 days? What's going to happen then? Are your children going to want to use the bathrooms? I don't know if I'm going to use the bathroom. I think these are things we need to consider. You still have time. 44 days, there's a smell in the school the minute you walk in the door, and there's black scuff marks. I don't know if this is the best they have. I think we should reconsider. Thank you. Aaron Benavides, 51 Antelope Circle. Just saying, when I went to the bathroom here, there was no toilet paper in the stall. Just so you know. Um, I'm talking in reference to the petition to change the new elementary school and high school um, start times. I have them here, which I'll pass up to you. Um, I understand that Cheryl Clarkin suggested the possibility of consolidating um, the neighborhood bus stops as a possible solution to the bus cut problem. Um, what problem? Excuse me? Say what Go ahead, problem? continue, please. Um, take Cheryl's neighborhood, for example. There are five bus stops for less than 15 kids. The bus stops at the corner of Shermantown and Morning Dove, proceeds down Shermantown, pick up one more kid loops back around Morning Dove to pick up two more kids, goes around the corner to pick up a few more, and then continues to Pheasant Run to pick up two more kids who live only three or four houses away. This just doesn't make sense. There should be one bus stop for Quail Hollow students, one bus stop for Holly Hills, Orchard Widths, et cetera. To make up for the 10 minute differences in the new start and end times for the 2012-2013 year, why can't buses stop at one or two stops in a neighborhood rather than five or six? 
We have many low traffic roads where houses stop needlessly. My neighborhood alone is a street in a cul-de-sac, yet it has two stops. Cut one stop. Let the kids walk a little further in some instances. Parents wait at bus stops for their car, in their cars until the bus comes anyways. If all buses consolidated stops in all parts of town, I think this would definitely make up for the 10 minutes that we're looking for. It's absolutely worth exploring. Because of the time crunch, it may not be possible to make changes before school starts, but maybe changes could be made before it gets dark early. The solution doesn't cost any money. Thanks. Mm. <laughs> All right, we move into superintendent's contract, I mean, report. Um, thank you. Um, I want to take a few moments to address um, some items that have occurred over the summer, the first of which um, is the issue of start times. Um, thank you for your comments. Um, it is, it's not something that um, I uh, see as a problem to, to look at that a little more closely. Um, I have sat personally with Mr. Haran our busing transportation person, and, and if you would like, I can have you come on in and present some of your ideas to him. Um, when he sits with me and shows me all of the models that he's using, and, and trust me, I mean, I don't, I don't want to change these times. Um, going backwards at the high school in particular, 10 minutes, I think 725 is more than early enough to start school. Going to 715 breaks my heart. So. You know, and then I understand the points about the 10 minutes. It makes a big difference to a lot of people. I understand that. So it's not something that I have been anticipating doing, and I am not advocating for it. I feel like when we went down the road of cutting two buses, we even wrote on the budget document that this would probably mean changing the bell times. We didn't know exactly to what extent, but, you know, um, so that's where we are right now. And, you know, a number of the budget issues that, you know, we have been looking at over the spring um, when we talk about, you know, the budget issues that we're dealing with uh, and, and the discussions that we have with the town council and so on and so forth, um, I think people, you know, once September comes along, people start to understand that these things really do have a consequence as we're feeling it, you know, with um, parents paying for their kids for certain sports. Um, we're paying for it um, with, um, in, in previous years, it may be easier to say, add a teacher when a class reaches close to cap. We're, we haven't done that this year. There's nothing on this agenda to do something like that. We're still within class cap, but now we have a policy, for instance, where the last student to move into a neighborhood, if the class is at cap, we would go with that student to the next available school. It's something we haven't done in the past, and for the, that family, it is an inconvenience that they'd prefer not to have, obviously. But those are the kinds of things that we've been moving to, and, and now that it's August and September is approaching, these, you know, these issues have, um, you know, uh, been something that I've been getting a lot of emails about and, and phone calls from concerned people, and I, and I understand that. Um, you know, I, I would welcome coming on in and meeting with Mr. Han and myself, and we could go over some of your ideas. Uh, normally, you know, I've, I've been at this one year now, and last year I had a lot of phone calls about issues that people had with busing and their particular stops. And, you know, 95% of the time I'd go to Mr. Haran and he had a very good explanation for why something has to happen. For instance, the four stops that you were talking about, you know, um, I don't know what that means right now, but I will ask him about that, and I'm sure that he could kind of walk you through why it is the way it is. Could it change? Maybe it could. I, I don't know. But those are the kinds of things we have to look at. Um, Obviously, you know, we were already kind of tight with busing as it was to, to have the start times that we did. In consolidating two buses out of a fleet of 20-something, Mary, do you know the, the number of buses in the fleet? Um, it's in the 20s. I'm not sure exactly how many. But even that, uh, that 10 minutes really does matter. You know, um, it's, it's, we, could, we could say we're going to do it on the old times, but then everything would be late and we wouldn't be able to keep a promise. So we're just trying to be honest with people about how these things would work. So um, like, like you said, I don't know if the kinds of changes that we could make could affect the beginning of school, but I have had conversations with Mr. Horan who said, let's play this out 
and see how some of these things go, and maybe there's a way to find some savings in different runs. It may not be all of the runs, and it may not necessarily even affect every school, but it may get certain kids home earlier at the end of the day, particularly for those late schools. You know, so um, we're going to try anything that we can. And, and if we have to make adjustments even during the school year, we will. We'll just make sure the communication is good and all the parents know what's going to happen. But, um, you know, unfortunately, I, I don't see us, you know, we've gone through this a number of times, looked at a lot of possibilities, and, and I feel like, you know, tomorrow I'm going to kind of get, start getting the word out officially about this uh, and um, let people know so they're, they're aware of, you know, how these start times are going to change. Um, that's one item. I'm going to ask Mary King if you could talk about the Davisville Middle School roof repairs. I have been attending the construction meetings uh, regarding the Davisville Middle School roof, and everything is on schedule. Um, the contractor has been working on Saturdays to assure this, uh, and we really we did have a, a minor issue on Friday with the torrential rains that we had. Um, but now uh, everything is moving forward, and I will continue to uh, attend those meetings until it's over. Thank you. The next I item. ask if the audience could keep it down while we conduct the rest of our meeting. Thank you. The next um, issue that I'd like to address is the quidnescent repairs. You know, um, as I've mentioned at a couple of meetings, it has been my goal, you know, and I know just about everybody uh, that I've talked to would like to see um, the roof adequately repaired at quidnescent. <laughs> All right, Dr. Jay, if you could please continue. And, um, Mary, if you could talk a little bit about those, uh, the work being done there. We've actually done quite a few things at Quinesset uh, thus far this summer. Um, we have repaired the windows so that they are operational, which I know was had been an issue in the past. Um, we also took some core samples of uh, the concrete areas, and we're waiting for that report to come back so that we can determine whether or not uh, there's a water table issue in that school. Uh, we've also met uh, as a facility subcommittee, and uh, there is a floor covering um, product that is going to be uh, put down about 200, 200 square feet at the beginning, the opening of Quinesset um, on Friday, actually, as uh, kind of a testing to see this product. Uh, it's a product that a couple of our facility subcommittee members know about. Uh, the, the sales rep came in and, and uh, made a presentation to the facility subcommittee meeting on August 6th, and they have um, stated that they would put down some sample covering so that we can see how, how it looks, how it wears, uh, and what uh, it can do. Regarding uh, the leak in the H the, on, the, on the roof, um, even after the torrential rains on Friday, uh, we had the same issue. We had some leaks around the inoperable HVAC unit at Quinesset. Uh, and we are going to be working with a contractor to see what we can do to, to get that unit closed up until it can be replaced, um, hopefully next summer. Um, and that's it on Quinesset. And, and as I've stated at previous meetings, the classroom area leaks, those, those have been repaired. So th this leak that uh, she's referring to is over the cafeteria, and we're, lo we're looking to make that happen, hopefully, before school begins. Um, I have a question, please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, with respect to the air conditioning units, why can't we replace those units, like, now, priority? Um, because um, it would take uh, an awful lot of time to get the RFPs going, to get all the approvals that we need from Ride just, and the school and the town. Not only we need an RFP, I think all we need to do is buy a unit and then separately install it. Uh, actually, no, because there are, so what I've been told, and this is by um, the town, Mr. Bergeron, as well as um, some other people, is that there are likely a roof design issue that's going to have to go along with replacing that HVAC unit. And it's not as simple as just bopping off one and putting on another one. And the timing involved with that is also could put us into a winter install, which is not an ideal situation. Well, it, it 
not to belabor it, but so uh, apparently it's what, the, the, the piping that's leaking underneath the unit? That's what we're assuming, yes. A design problem or installation problem for 10 years. I understand. For 10 years. And these poor teachers have been reporting this year in and year out and year in and year out. And but for the fact that we didn't have the roofing manufacturer up there and the work that Jim McGuinn did, we wouldn't know what those Mudge? are today. Do you have a question, Mr. Mudge? Okay. Well, yeah. I'm, I, so, uh, so uh, I, I, I asked this before. Are we going to have a written report of all these things presented to us at some point in time? Because it seems to me that a leaky roof, the core samples and floor covering were really not the problem. They were the, they were the, the, what do you call it? They were the, uh, golly, were not the problem. They was the, uh, come on, help me. <laughs> Symptoms? Symptoms of the problem. The problem was terrible maintenance management. Terrible maintenance management. We sat here several months ago with umbrellas on our head and so forth. We're fighting to get Davisville Middle School squared away. Then we look at Quinesset and we're assured no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. Now that we get professional people in here, and I was glad to see that they replaced, what, a thousand feet or something of, I'm not sure how many was, or several hundred feet of padding that that needed to be replaced. There was unauthorized patches in the roofs. That's poor management. Right. So th there is a question from Mr. Mudge. Okay. So what are we going to do about the poor management? Is your question poor management, or is your question that there is a report that you want? Well, both. I want. I'd like to have a full, complete report from womb to tomb, as they say. I asked for this two months ago. You know, all I can two tell you, ago. Mr. Mudge, is that you know you talked about knowing about this for ten years. Um, I've been superintendent for one year. Um, I've already um, worked on a bond to um, uh, help uh, against against your um, better judgment, in my opinion, to help the Davisville Middle School roof. Thankfully, I never that voted. passed. I never, okay, that's I never, number one. I always support and, and, I and within, always support and within, Jay has the floor. Within, you know, uh, it didn't take me too long to learn, once I learned what I needed to learn about the Quidnesset roof, that we're acting on it. We've already handled the problem. But until... And, uh, is, can I finish, please? Has the floor. So when I learned about the issue in the classroom area, we, we aggressively went after that. We did it with uh, money uh, that was under warranty, so it didn't cost us any money. And we are now looking at this HVAC system. I don't know how we can go any faster than we're going. We're working with our facility subcommittee. These are people that we trust, that know roofs. You're welcome to come to those meetings and, and you know, uh, lend your opinion there. So, you know, um, we're doing the best we can. At some point, if you'd like some kind of a report about what we've done, that would be fine. It would basically be to tell you the things I've just told you. Well, I think so, we ought to document it. Well, that's fine. Especially so, the at some point, I will give you a document, Welch. if that's what you would like. Mr. Welch. And by the way, I, I didn't suggest it was you, Dr. Mr. Welch. Dr. Oje. Okay. okay? Mr. Welch. It was years of mismanagement up there. And by the way, Mr. Draper, he was here for five years. What was he doing? Okay, Mr. Welch. I'm in agreement with Mr. Mudge, and I've said this at the facilities meeting, and I have called for the unit at Quidnesset and Stony Lane to be replaced this heating season. There has been pushback from the Department of Public Works Director, Phil Bergeron, and the architect. I'm sorry. I. <clears throat> I don't agree with their pushback. I agree with Mr. Mudge. And quite frankly, I would ask this committee to go along with Mr. Mudge and myself and say, we don't want to hear any excuses. We want those units replaced before the heating season starts, which is about November 1st. I agree. If the town is unwilling or doesn't have the manpower to handle the problem, 
that's their problem. Our problem is they don't fund us correctly. We have operating expenses that we can't achieve. Replacing this equipment is extremely important. It's covered in the bond. These are more than likely just what Mr. Mudge said, take one unit off, put another one on. There may be minor modifications. Then This is not a major problem. If this was private industry, we wouldn't be having this discussion. The thing would be fixed. Amen. We're not doing it. So I would ask everyone here to please indicate your preference that this is done prior to November 1st. Put the onus where it belongs on the town to get the job done. Please. Is that a motion? No, we, this is can't, not can't a, motion a motion time. This is just merely for the superintendent. Can we write a letter to the town? I will communicate this information at tomorrow's uh, Davisville Middle School meeting to Mr. Bacheron. Would you put that in the form of a documentation to the town manager? Yes. Um, Mrs. Uh, Vendano and then Mrs. Benson. Just very briefly, I wanted to express support for what Mr. Welch just said. Um, and Mr. Munch. And Mr. Munch. <laughs> Mrs. Benson. Um, I just wanted to say when you go to the facilities committee, maybe Mr. Bergeron should come in and explain to the school committee because I pointed out once, twice, and three times. The facilities committee is appointed by us. We are the ones responsible to the people. So maybe, maybe we have put too much on them. And there's another reason that he won't give it at the facilities committee. He works for the town. We're in an auxiliary of the town. So let's see if we can't work together and get the thing in. Because we're the ones responsible to the citizens, Mr. Welch. And this facilities committee, they can come and go like the rain drops. But people are going to hold you and I are responsible for what we sit here and do, and not the superintendent. The town took that responsibility away from us. All right, let's, let's continue and move on with the superintendent's report the here. We have, we have a long agenda here tonight. Is um, a couple of quick... Um, on the bond? I didn't finish, Madam President. Well, we need to move on, Mrs. Benson. We have a long agenda. Move right on, and I'm going to yes. finish. I asked a question. Was that because of uh, no. that money... It's the way the bond was written to do the repairs. That way, so the school committee wouldn't have the It was the way the bond right? was written. Yep. Did we offer any objections when the we bond was we written? We weren't allowed to see the language of the bond, if you recall. Wait a minute. I think that comes okay. under the Okay, we're off the, the topic right now. This is the superintendent's agenda, uh, and we are off the topic I'm by discussing the, the bond. Was he allowed to have the privilege to have any input on the wording of the bond? No. no. Uh, that, that was the, the wording of the bond was before I was the superintendent, I believe, if I'm, no. if I'm recalling the right bond. No, I think we're talking about the last month. Uh, uh, I, I did have you know, as much of an opportunity as anyone on the stage for the, set, for the last bond, yes. Uh-huh, but um, you're the one who's responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the school, and you didn't express that? I, I don't believe that that was something that was offered for us to be able to see, Mrs. Benson. You don't believe? Well, let's get something straight. Well, hasn't there been some dialogue with the town to get that changed now? Yes. And how's that going, Dr. Oche? Totally okay. as, as far as I understand, there is, you know, there is agreement from the town, and we're working with RIDE to, um, you know, use whatever available money is in that bond to help us with these kinds of projects, particularly Equidneset, because that's written into the bond. Um, I need everyone to understand that, you know, I, I understand, I'm all with you about trying to get new HVAC at these schools before November 1st. I get it. That's what I want. But, you know, we, we deal in a world um, with the Department of Education, with our town, where we abide by meeting times and, and have different kinds of committees put their stamps on things, and these things take time. Not to mention the fact that right now we still do not have a facilities director in this district. So Mary King is doing double time 
in, in taking care of our financial house and our house house, uh, our buildings. And um, quite frankly, the buildings part, because it's summer and because we have some major projects going on, is taking up way too much of our time. So we're at the point right now where we're doing some interviewing. Uh, we will be very soon for a, a director. Hopefully that can get things expedited a little bit faster as well. You know, so I want to do these things as quickly as possible. And, um, you know, it is my goal to, to do HVAC, bef you know, on these buildings before, um, you know, November. We also, you know, we're not going to meet a deadline in, in getting, you know, we're, we're having some study done about air conditioning here. They would love that to happen before September 1st. That's not going to happen in time. You know, um, we would love for, you know, as I talked about before, a whole new floor to be put in at Gwinnesset. That, because of timing and because of the school year and because you can't do it during the school year, and we're going to need a lot of lead time to prepare for that, that's going to have to happen next summer. So there's a lot of projects that are in the queue. Um, there's even more with the, the old bond that we've, we've worked with the town, and we think we have some, some uh, possibilities now about working with some of that money. So there's going to be some things happening, but to say that it's all going to happen tomorrow morning um, just isn't realistic. So. We're keeping the pressure on. I really want these things to happen sooner rather than later, and I, but I just need everybody to understand that, you know, we're going to be doing the best we can, and, and I will continue to keep you posted on, you know, how we're doing. Um, so what you said, that Dr. Oje, is that we've already addressed this with Ride. The town council's done their job. We addressed this with Ride. Now we're we'll Madam Chair, can you make a point of order, please? Could point back from of Ride. order, please. What is your point of order? My point of order is... Members of this committee need to be recognized by the chair. This meeting is totally out of control, and I would like it brought back under control, please. All right. Duly noted. Mr. Mudge, you may finish your question, you. and then we are going back Thank to um, Dr. Roger. Just, in, just to understand the process is that I, we don't have a problem with the town. The town. I want to make sure that well, the town council, that we, we're, we're working together, and the balls in the, the court in, in terms of ride, you know, doing whatever they have to do. That's all I want to know. Mr. Mudge, I'd like to address that. Um, first of all, I would like to say that Mr. Bergeron from the town has been more than accommodating. I have worked with him and Mr. Partridge over the three months that I've been here, and they have been very supportive of the issues at the school and the but, needs for the schools. But, Secondly, um, the $6.4 million bond, which is primarily the one we're speaking of, just because it's gone through voter approval and ride approval, there are still many steps when you actually get to the actual project that you want to do. There are RFPs. There are a lot of things that still don't need. The information still needs to go back to ride and the school committee and the town council. So it's not just that 6.4 million, here you go, you kind of thought this is what you were going to spend it on, go forward. There's still a process that needs to be followed with RIDE, and, and RIDE has to be involved. You know, there are schematics, there, there's, you know, design phase. There are all, all of that that needs to go through, and that stuff doesn't happen overnight. So talking about the $6.4 million, I'm talking about getting the work done at Quinesset Elementary School. That's part of the $6.4 okay. million. Well, but you don't have to do everything. And by the way, the town can do what they've done in other places, and I'm not sure you've talked to them or not. The town can actually fund the project, okay, up front the project and switch the money around in, in the end. Okay, and so that, still, that still needs to go through RIDE, though, before they but, do that. But, so why, why don't we approach RIDE, okay, uh, and try to expedite those two, you know, two issues through RIDE? We don't need, and quite frankly, because I'm going to be fighting the other ones because we don't need many of them. Okay? Because you, you need okay. RFPs and solid information on what your project is before you go to ride with this information. So the next step right, that we I, would be I, taking with Knesset in replacing the HVAC units is actually going out to RFP and getting the information and seeing how much it's going to cost. Well, how long, like Remember, Mr. Wells just we said, that's, you can take that voters. off the shelf I mean, practically. The, the, if we had done the, that a few And I'm just ago, communicating to you the information that I have from Mr. Bergeron and Mr. Partridge. So I right. would actually suggest that possibly you speak with him individually if you if that's the information I've discussed this with them and Mr. Welch knows that but so I, but all right we're going to move on Dr. Roger is going to move on to uh, state funding for wireless I, services I want to um, Madam talk Madam about Chair, we um I have a comment on that and we have, you'll have to say your comment later we have um, learned uh, through uh, a vote of the legislature this June we're starting to get some information in on this that 
Uh, it looks like North Kingstown is good for in the neighborhood of almost $800,000 in, in uh, funding to help us to accommodate wireless services in our buildings. This is a, a huge item. Um, this is taking place all around the state. As you know, I mean, um, our students um, are communicating more and more. All of us are communicating more and more, you know, with the use of computers and wireless. We're doing so tonight to some extent. And, um, and so, you know, to have this in all of our schools will be a great thing. We don't have a lot of the details yet on you know, how we get that money and when and all of that. I know there is something, uh, a part of this that will be a phase where RIDE comes and does kind of an inspection of your district to look at what you need and they make an estimate as to the actual money that you get. But um, the, the, the straightforward calculation about funding going to our schools uh, is suggesting to us that we're in the neighborhood of $790,000 worth of funding for, for wireless technology. Um, another reason for this, in, in 2014, we're looking at a park test, um, uh, P-A-R-C-C, you, you know the acronym. Oh, you're going to do this Partnership. Or... Partnership for um, career, um, career readiness. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Achievement readiness for college and careers. Thank you very much for that. Um, and that test is, um, you know, they're still working on the details, but that will be done not just in one day. That will be done over many days and at several grade levels, most of them. Um, that will be done as a, uh, on a computer. So you can just think of, of the, um, the issues that districts would have about bandwidth and, and about the ability to um, make sure that this happens and flows smoothly. So it, it you know, um, it's, it's a little ways off, but it is approaching, and, and part of the plan from RIDE is this technology. So I, wanted, I just wanted people to be aware that we have been notified about this, um, but it's very early in the stages, and I will keep you posted on that as well. What's the fiscal year that that might happen? Again, you know, they, they just notified us. I'm assuming that we'll be learning some things this year, um, but I, I don't know that for sure. Thank you. Um, the, the next item is... Um, uh, as you know, I just want to keep you posted. You know that we had approved a, an agreement with Block Island to help them with their technology. We received some money from them for these services. A lot of these things are things that we already do within our district, and taking on a, a small district as small as Block Island is relatively easy and at low cost for us. So um, it's almost you know straightforward revenue all the way through. And and I just wanted to let, let you know that it is going very well. We're getting very positive feedback from. Um, Bob Hicks, the superintendent in, in Block Island, and, and things be, seem to be going very smoothly without much, you know, um, without much of, um, you know, a problem for our staff to uh, be able to accommodate them. The last thing I want to focus on in my, in my superintendent's report tonight, actually this, this is one more quick item, um, is the Green School. As you know, we have been trying to uh, have the Green School um, occupy about two-thirds of the Davisville Elementary uh, School uh, and have the rest of the, the school for our own programs, uh, transition programs for special education kids and for um, the um, COSI program that we have. And um, we have not been able to get the Green School into Davisville Elementary yet. Um, um, I've been... I've been blown away by the amount of bureaucracy that uh, is taken up, principally because that is a building that is funded partially um, with bond funds. And um, to have, you know, even though it's still going to be used for public school, it's not necessarily North Kingstown Public School, and there are some details to iron out, um, and it's amazing how many lawyers seem to get involved when so with something like this. It, it's really, I thought we were pretty much in the clear back in the spring, but that just has not happened. So there's been a few things. The, the town is involved. Uh, they, they, you know, it's been a long process. Uh, I think that for the most part people would like to see this happen, and we're trying to clear away the roadblocks to make it happen, but it's taking time. And we've just taken too much time this summer to clear away those things. And so the Green School will not be coming to Davisville Elementary right now. Um, they have just spoken to me today and, and say at the next board meeting they're going to talk about the possibility of continuing to pursue this possibly for next year. Um, and so, you know, if they do that or, or, or if they don't, um, I will be coming back to you to talk about planning for DE. Uh, if they don't, obviously, we're going to have to look at something very different. And uh, I have some ideas in mind, but until, you know, I know uh, 
about the green schools plans for sure and the feasibility of making it happen for the timeline that they would like. Um, you know, but th that'll be a subject of much discussion over over the school year. And, and one way or another, I would like to do something um, significant with uh, Davisville Elementary. Um, the last thing I just would be remiss. I mean, I think our whole community knows it, but I just wanted to reiterate the the rally that we had here about a week ago for Elizabeth Beisel was one of the finest events I've ever been a part of in North Kingstown. It really gave me a great deal of pride to be a North Kingstown resident and to be the superintendent of the school system. Um, Elizabeth is an outstanding person and she should, you know, her commendations speak for themselves and she has really brought honor to our school department and um, given us all someone to be inspired about and, and that's really such a great thing. And, um, and you know, her family also, her mom works in the, in the district and is an outstanding person and you know, I, I wish them well as they move forward. And um, and I just wanted to say that it was a tremendous night for our community. And that's all I have for my superintendent's report this evening. Mrs. Avanzato, just very quickly uh, as a follow up, it was a great night for North Kingstown um, at the rally. And I, I just, she's a product of our schools, and she's just a great kid. But I thought that the way it was handled by you, Dr. Oje, and by you, Mr. Welch. And what you said was just right on as far as I was concerned because it was just all about her. It wasn't, it was just all about Elizabeth and her family. And you made it about that and very simple and very kind of a hometown kind of a celebration. And I really liked that about it. It wasn't flashy in, you know, big city in any way. So it was great. Um, the other <coughs> comment that I wanted to make very quickly is I want to go back to two things on your report very briefly. Um, the green school situation, that is a real shame. This committee discussed that, and you brought this to us, and you worked very hard on it, and you were looking at bringing a significant amount of money into this district, $100,000 a year, that could help us with, with different issues that we're sitting here facing tonight. You know, everybody stands up and points to this school committee. We can only spend what we're given by the town. You need to talk to the town council. As you can see, we are under dire stress. I could go over what we've cut this past year, and it's been, it's been significant. And just that money alone could pay for one of the buses that we're talking about here. And the, sat and the thing is, this committee, when we discussed that green school lease, we decided that we really need to let the town look at it because it, this is a town building. We should allow the town council to look at it. We assumed that there would be no problem. They've done nothing but put up roadblocks to this. We were willing to do anything to work it out. And they found a way to deny it. I'm just going to say the truth. That's what it is. They found a way to say no to it. And they've said no to it, but yet they squeeze us tighter and tighter. And they take away this op opportunity that we could have had uh, to do this. And I just think it's a real shame. Back to the start time issue. Um, I wouldn't mind having this on a, on a future agenda so that school committee members could speak to it. And I like the idea of exploring. And that's an excellent idea that Cheryl Clark had brought forth and Aaron Benavides. And I really appreciate that. And I think. It might not get us all the way there, but maybe we can get part of the way there with that, and we can certainly look at it. So that's all. Thank you. Dr. Jay, you had one more thing? Uh, um, yeah. You know, I, I, I would be remiss, you know, and in, in, uh, I certainly am the, one of the first people to, you know, be critical of, uh, you know, the town council or Mike Embry on different issues. But I, I just want to say what a pleasure it was to actually uh, work in a concerted effort on the Liz Beisel rally with uh, Mr. Embry. Um, you know, he, he provided us with the police. We were in constant contact about, you know, we, we didn't know what to expect, had no idea, because um, other parts of the country, there were reports of, you know, six, ten thousand 10,000 people possibly showing up to this that could totally overwhelm our town. Uh, as it turned out, it was a nice, comfortable crowd, filled up the stadium, but really nothing more than that, about 1,500 to 2,000 people. But we were pre prepared for more than that. and. And that had a lot to do with uh, the communication between uh, the school department and, and Mr. Embry. And, and I just wanted to, to say that I appreciate that from him. All right, folks, it is 9 o'clock, and we still have a busy agenda. I, I would ask. I would ask for the, to talk we, about the uh, green school, just to make a comment on that, please. Uh, uh, you know, if you, you have could, a comment, I, I think you direct you let it to Dr. Roger at some other time. I think you let Mrs. Avanzano talk about that. Time. Tonight. Didn't you let Mrs. Avanzano talk about that? Can we, can we go on? It is 9 o'clock. Okay, we, okay, what time is it? And we have a full Point of order. agenda. Could, could I comment, please, on the green school if, as if, if can other members? Can you make just a short did. comment, please? You know, Mrs. Page, you didn't ask Mrs. Robinson to give you a short comment. 
Well, you know, I should have. I'm sorry. I gave a short comment, so I don't think you need to say that. I always give a short comment. Okay. I'm not interested in talking for a minute. But the point is, first of all, I was going to ask, I haven't seen the, ever seen the contract, the final contract. I would like to have seen that, quite frankly, because I don't think we ever really finished that, see what it was. Or did we see what the metrics were? Because Mrs. Armanzano, I take exception to what you said. I believe that contract execution would have cost us $200,000 a year. And I've got the facts to show it. Okay, this is okay. just a comment. We're not okay. arguing. Remember, this is just the superintendent's. Um, well, you've allowed everybody else to talk, Mrs. Uh, no, Page. Yes, I've let you talk plenty of times, Mr. Mudge. Yep. Um, so, like I said, we, we need to move on to our, our consent agenda. So, um, first we have is routine items. Do I have a motion to seal the executive session minutes from June 26th and, and August 14th? So moved. Right. Comments, please. I have a second. Comments. I'll second. Um, so, yes, before the vote, you uh, your comment. Yeah. Uh, first of all, after looking at these, why are, the, why are we seeing these? There's nothing in there that is particular or uh, that the, the public should uh, be aware of. Number one, there's nothing that was sacrosanct or, you know, pertain to any uh, people or any negotiations or anything. So I'm not sure why they should be uh, sealed. And also, uh, the, the we had a discussion about the... Uh, the NEA RA contract on here, NEA RA RA contract, and how can we seal the minutes of the August 14th meeting when we haven't even seen them? And also the fact that that I understand that the teachers union had submitted a contract to the school department in June, and that wasn't discussed. That, see, I can talk about that. that wasn't discussed during the meeting. So why, why would it be, re, be approved in the August 14th meeting? Did we receive a, 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 a proposal or something from the teachers' union regarding the contract? We didn't? No. No. No, we, had, we didn't. No. We, we've received no documentation from the union okay, regarding the contract. Okay. No. Thank you. Maybe I, I misunderstood that. All right, so there is a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor say aye. Aye. What was the motion? The motion was to seal the executive minutes from June 26th and August 14th. There's a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. No. <laughs> and I have a question. Mrs. Avanzada, did you vote? I did. I said aye. Okay, so the ayes have it. Um, disclosure of executive session votes. Maureen? Hold on. All members were present at the executive session of August 14th, except for John Viscardin and Larry Cerisi. Motion was made by Kim Page to adjourn executive session and go into open. The vote was the motion passed 4 to 0. Bill Mudge was not present for the vote. All members were present at the executive session of June 26, 2012, except for Melvoy Benson and Bill Mudge. Motion was made by Dick Welch to adjourn executive session and go into open. Vote was the motion passed 5 to 0. Thank you. Mrs. Benson, you had a question? Yes. How long do executive session minutes have to stay sealed before they can be utilized? I think Mrs. Um, um, Carol has answered that before, but go ahead. Until you unseal them. They're sealed until you unseal them. Okay. I just wanted the understanding because a lot of those executive session minutes deal with the problems and the contracts that we are having and the janitors and I don't want them to serve as a deterrent as to exactly what went on in the meetings and we won't have to say wasn't that there well executive session thank you Mrs. Closed. Benson all right thank we're now moving listening. into consent agenda um, do I have a motion to approve the consent I, agenda? Nate, uh, I'm, I'm going to exempt uh, the entire agenda, please. And I'm going to leave. I, I need to hear. Oh, I'm going to make a motion to approve the entire consent agenda. He can make his motion. And I'll we'll second that. Yes. I, I have second. already exempted him. Yeah, you didn't have a second. Um, I, I don't need to be a, excuse me, Robert's Rules of Order says Take I don't need a Take second. A Take a vote. Robert's Rules of Order. All right. Well, we still have a motion on the floor to uh, approve the entire consent Excuse agenda. Excuse me. You have a motion on the floor. First of all, you have a 
exemption. I have exempted him. Robert's no. Rules of Order allows me to do that. Do you, are you aware of that, Madam Chairman? I am. Then, and Mrs. Avanzardo has made a motion no, no, to but, approve the entire fixed and agenda. She, she can't do it. You've got to address mine, ma'am. You can't do that. I don't even know what the question is right now. I'm, I'm exempting all the items. I've exempted all the items. If you exempted all the items, now she's made a motion to approve all the items. So if her motion passes, then you don't get to exempt. But I just want to remind the chair that we're pulling 15 off. Okay. Yes, that is correct. I have Item number 15 is before we're being pulled off. Wait a minute. This is what I call institutionalized. I won't. But you may call it whatever you want, Mrs. Benson. I would call it making sure that we um, get our business sure done as we are supposed to. Motion. So there is a motion on the floor, second and there, the first motion and I, the no, he has not made a motion. He has exempted it. I have everyone. exempted it. So his motion will be exempted if Mrs. Avanzato's motion does not pass. No, 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 time out. Time Go out. ahead, Mrs. Avanzato. You cannot. No, Mrs. Avanzato has Do you follow floor. Robert's Rules of Order? Avanzato has Chair, the floor. The attorney has made a ruling, apparently, so we know that my motion can at least proceed. The point that I want to make is that this is very unfortunate. As a school committee member, there may be, and this has happened repeatedly, and Mr. Buscarden was not happy either. There are items on here that I would like to see discussed that this committee deserves to have time to discuss, but we cannot discuss them because we have someone who's obstructing the business of the school committee, and it's been repeatedly. Well, I disagree with you. Excuse You've me, you have not been recognized. You can disagree with me when you're recognized. Let me finish my comment. I just want to say that it is oh. a shame because we are supposed to be sitting up here to do the business for the children of North Kingstown, yeah, right. and we cannot get the business done because one person wants to commandeer the entire committee, and it's not correct. Commandeer the entire Thank committee. You. Okay. Now, what's Robert Rules of Water say, uh, Madam Attorney? Marianne Carroll, I'm, I'm directing this towards you because I think you're the Mr. Mudge, we, again, you, you don't always follow Robert's Rules of Order. Sometimes you do, oh, sometimes no, no. you don't. Who, Why who, who me or the committee? Well, there's a lot of things. That if, if we were following Robert's Rules what of Order, What is Robert's Mr. Rules Mudge, of Order? I, unfortunately, would be making a ruling regarding some of the issues that you've brought up if we follow Robert's Rules. Time up. Uh, do we follow Robert's Rules of Order or not? Okay. We have had a ruling no. by Mrs. No, Mrs. No. Carroll. Wait a minute. We have, you've got to be kidding. Not we have not. There, we don't always follow School committee Robert's policy rules. B, D, and B, E says Robert's Rules of Order. We are going to take the motion, and then if the motion fails, we will um, recognize that you have exempted everything. So we have a motion to approve the consent agenda, barring number, item number 15. Who, who bought item 15? That's, that was something that, 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 that we have That's to take that off the agenda tonight. Lorraine, can you take a roll call vote, please? Kimberly Page. Yes. Richard Welsh. Unfortunately, yes. Linda Avanzato. Unfortunately, yes. Melvoid Benson. No, because the first motion wasn't done. Unfortunately, it wasn't carried out. Okay. No. And William Munch is no. No. Dr. Uge, I'm gonna, thank you, Lorraine. Dr. Uge, go ahead. So, excuse me. No, I, I've given Dr. Auger the floor. Excuse me. Point I've of order. Given Dr. Point, Auger excuse the floor. me. What's point, your point of, of order? order. What's your point of order, Mr. Mudge? You need two thirds, uh, uh, two thirds approval to override, okay, the exemption. Mr. Mudge, you can't interfere with the business of the committee. And if you want to exempt every single thing on the consent agenda, it's not every. You don't know. It's more simple to do that. I have a few questions on most of them. But you okay. exempted but everything. It, it, what, how many items are there? That's not the issue. We're talking about Robert's Rules of Order. No, we're now, not. What, Mr. Mudge, I'm going to rule you out of order right now, and I'm going to give the floor to Dr. Uge. I fully, my counsel, you don't she, doesn't she need two-thirds? No. Doesn't she need no. two-thirds? No. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Uge has the floor. I just want to uh, quickly say um, thank you um, for your, you know, approving the um, consent agenda tonight. And, and two of the um, acts that you have just uh, approved, uh, one is for um, is Kathleen Perry, who is our new um, assistant director of pupil personnel. I, I have worked with Ms. Perry 
um, in the Charaho District where she was the director of special ed. She is absolutely outstanding and has, uh, um, you know, Charaho has uh, achieved some wonderful scores. Uh, some of the scores we just talked about tonight um, for their schools. Um, and that has a lot to do with, you know, special ed population scores. And uh, so having someone of Ms. Perry's caliber here is going to be a big boost to us. Um, also, uh, Ms. Perry is, is known for her work in creating something called the RISE School at, um, at Charaho. And that's, that's a program that brings within the district um, some of those students that are traditionally, um, you know, go to um, programs like Bradley or, or other programs where they're, uh, they leave the district at great expense. So there, there are possibilities here to um, save significant money and to give our students, you know, still excellent services. So very happy to have you. Congratulations on your appointment and for being with us on the team. Um, and, and I'm going to ask Dr. Humber to talk about Susan Imschweiler. Uh, Susan is here with us, and Susan has been trained by the Department of Ed uh, to be an evaluator and to uh, provide professional development uh, to staff on the evaluation process. Uh, some of the responsibilities include serving as a complementary evaluator, participating in observations and conferences, um, to providing PD to administrators to calibrate ratings and provide effective feedback, et cetera, et cetera. So she will be helping us to uh, implement the educator evaluation and support system and uh, to be able to um, help us um, move towards quality evaluations in the district. Thank you. And, and I just want to make a note that both of these positions um, are funded primarily uh, through funds that are not uh, district funds. The uh, Assistant uh, Director of Special Education is funded through our IDEA grant. And this particular position, um, uh, a small fraction of it is our own professional development money that we've done some transfer with, but the rest of it, um, I'm going to say about 95 percent of it or, or so, is uh, race to the top funds. So we are thrilled to have uh, um, Mrs. Imschweiler uh, with us. Um, she has already done a lot of work in training our, our staff and uh, is going to be an outstanding addition uh, for us in, in this role. She's already been in the district, but um, having her do this work will be an enormous help to us. What was the total salary she had on Mr. that? Mr. Mudge. It's, it's listed on your agenda. Um, so would you tell me what it is? I don't see it. Uh, I would just like to say something concerning. Yes. I'd like to congratulate the superintendent for being able to get Miss Mishwilder, is that correct? $13,000. What? Mishwilder. Mishwilder. Because I kept up diligently with the type of training that you are going through with the Department of Education. And I say it was second to none from reading and the way the publicity was put out. So I would personally like to welcome you to our system and hope you're very lucky to have a person who's gone through all of that training. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Because if those of you on the school committee keep up with the... Go ahead, Mrs. Benson. Keep up with the goings on in the department and read the newspaper, you would you would know right. what I'm saying. Even and speaking of reading the newspaper, while I got it, I guess I must say it. That was my hometown where the contracted janitors have a suit, and I happen to have a classmate, too, sitting on the school committee there. And, then she's and we talked about it, the and they are anyway. up for rape charges. That's and that is Thank you, Mrs. Jackson, Benson. Tennessee. Don't flush over it, because we didn't get a chance to shoot. And I well, think you've got many chances to speak. To okay. hit the record. A point of order. Thank you. Okay. Point um, of order. Yes, Mr. Mudge. I'd like to know uh, a point of information. I'd like to know what... Uh, not that I have, I certainly don't have any, any problems with the individuals. What is the salary uh, on that, please? It's on page on, six. On, on what? On uh, the, uh, send me your the uh, cost for this position. The salary is $75,694. It's the same salary that she's been making a, a, as a teacher in the district. That has not changed. 
Okay. What, what is this? It's being uh, paid for now with race to the top money. That's well, the part that's changed. What is this over here, $107,000? On order. 107000 What is your point of order, Mrs. Benson? Excuse me. My point of order is, Mr. Murray. Yeah. Probably has to do with salary think, and benefits. Excuse me? I don't think salaries, if you read closely, oh, dear God. salaries are not the thing. And you speak first about money. And Mrs. Benson, I need a point of order, not not just something that you're going to disagree with, Mr. Um, Mr. I didn't John. say I was in disagreement with him. I said. Okay, but what is your point of order? Because he has the floor and he's able to to ask his question. And then we're I'm moving on. I'm explaining to him why I gave him a point of order. You didn't give me a point of order. Okay, My Mr. Mudge, you have the floor. Please continue. Into that well, Mr. Well, Mudge, don't. please continue. But here's my point is, I have on here uh, $107,000, I got $97,000 of grant funding, and then $10,000 from general funding. How you co-mingle money for that position? And that's salary and benefits, you're saying? Yes. So what, what funding, what part is the $10,000? Kind of a round number, okay? What is that paying for, the $10,000, the benefits? That is part of the benefits. We, we, we did a percentage, um, an even percentage of each of the um, benefits, including pension, and distributed it according to the rules um, under UCOA. <laughs> do, you, you, do you understand that a grant-funded project, grant-funded, the benefits must be fully Loaded. Yeah, we have we have a pro, we did this with ride, and this was. I don't care with ride. So I want to make sure I understand that. Is this ninety-seven thousand? This this ninety-seven thousand dollars that includes all benefits? No, it, no, it's distributed between the general fund and the federal fund. Can't do it. Cannot do it. All right, thank you, Mr. Mudge. It's ride. Taken, I have a letter from Ride because they approved it for I us. I have so. a ride. Could, we, could I get a letter from Ryan on that, then, please? Feel free to ask them yourself. Okay. Dr. Roger. So All right. We I do have a letter from Ryan that says that they will be, okay, fully funded. Grants are fully funded. Right. It's the same damn thing that Howie did years ago. Into, um, I'm going to. So would you please get ask Ryan for a letter? I, I have the figures here that I can share with you. But no, I'm speaking. I want I, I don't, I don't need that to ask Ryan for a letter. Monies. You want a letter? Right. Ask Ryan. Okay, oh, thank we're you very now much, moving Dr. into Roger. unfinished business. We have the 2011-2012 budget. Dr. Roger. We'll let uh, Mary King make a brief report on this. Uh, we are uh, wrapping up FY 2012. We are actually uh, pending two pieces of revenue uh, for the town to book uh, the actuals. Uh, and that would be uh, Medicaid and also lunch bites on the food service side. Um, we know what should have been billed through June 30th for uh, Medicaid, for example. However, uh, the town uh, books that as cash received. So once they reconcile their cash account, we'll know exactly what that number is. So we are in uh, a draft still until we can get that done. We are, even with that being said, projecting an approximately $460,000 surplus in FY12. Um, and again, that could be a little bit more and it could be a little bit less uh, based on what those revenue numbers come out to and if there are any large changes by the auditors. Um, the fund balance that we would have, assuming this uh, approximately $460,000 uh, uh, surplus, this would also include the $200,000 transfer to CIP that was made at the June 26 meeting. We're looking at approximately $870,000 in, uh, in our fund balance, uh, which includes our estimated FY12 surplus. So that's, excuse me, that's the Would FY... Would you like to recognize Mr. Mudge? Excuse me? Would you like to be recognized? Yes, thank you. So what the, the fiscal year 12 surplus was 800000 No. No. The fiscal 12 surplus is approximately $460,000. Okay. And if you add that to our fund balance and you also include the $200,000 transfer we made on June 26 to CIP, so that's money out, we're looking at approximately eight hundred. 
and $6,870,000 in fund balance, assuming that that draft number for FY12 doesn't change dramatically. Mm -hmm. So we, we really jumped into that. Uh, question. Uh, I, I had submitted a request to get uh, an end of month June report that we generally provide and has to go to the state of the island. Uh, I haven't received that. Are you looking for the state report? Yeah, yeah I, I think I sent an email in and I have a, an OMA that I I wasn't clear on what you were looking for. If you're looking for the state report, I can send you the state report I, that I sent to Mrs. I Sunderland. specifically asked in my letter that was answered by the lawyers for the end of June monthly report. And I, I followed up on, with a couple emails to Dr. Oje and yourself and even the attorney, and I've never received that report. Why not? Uh, because I thought you were looking for detail for FY12, which is what you had originally asked no, for. I asked for the fund, the end-of-year report, the, with all the, yes, if you want to say that, with all the UConn numbers. Well, see, and, and that's the part that I don't have. It's but not the same draft. All right, all right, Mr. Mudge, you don't need to be belligerent. You, okay. She's just I, how can you say you don't have that? You have I just to have explained that. to you that we have two revenue items that we are waiting for final information from the town to be booked. You Therefore, the numbers are draft. You don't. I'm not talking about the end of the fiscal right. year. I was talking about June 30th. June 30th. And I the think we have a report. clarification on what you want now, and so you will be able to eventually get that report, as Mrs. Um, King has already said. So I, I guess I pointed out, I sent emails several times asking for the June 30th report, not the oh, end of okay. the year report. And, and but I, I guess I'm still not really clear. I'm sorry, Mrs. Page. Are you looking for the month of June, or are you looking for the year end June 30th? No, because the year end June 30th is not final. I understand that. And I said, just like I asked for the June 30th, or excuse me, the May 30th, or the February, and with the Yukon numbers. That's exactly what I was looking for. So the month of June. Yeah, the end of the June month. June 1st to June 30th. Yeah, the end of the month. Okay. That, that we sent to Ride with all the UConn numbers associated but, with it. Yeah, I didn't send anything to Ride with UConn numbers. What went to Mrs. Sunderland at the town for the draft end of the year number is Excuse just a, a state report. And that's at the municipality, right? You sent that to the Department of Municipal Affairs and the Order of the General. Excuse me. Yes, the order of the general. Thank you. All right, I'm going to ask that if we have, if there's any more uh, misunderstanding here, that this can be worked out separately. Um, well, I try and, to. Um, I will take note that, and I see your hand, Mrs. Benson, that we need to remember because this number of the 460,000 is high, but we need to remember we had an extremely warm winter last year where we had very low um, heating costs, and we also need to remember that we had hardly any snow that we um, had next to nil in plowing. So that makes a big difference in our energy costs that, you know, when people say, well, why don't you take that money and use it for X, Y, and Z, we need to remember that last year we got extremely lucky um, on some of these things. We also curtailed a number of the spending issues that we would have liked to have gotten things. So, um, you know, I've heard people already say, well, why don't you take that extra money that you have and you can put that towards and you name the cause. And I guess I would just say is that we got lucky last year in that um, I don't think that we'll necessarily have two years in a row of warm winters, a little bit of snow, and we can't always cut all our supplies that we, that we need. And to, to, to add to that, you know, I, I think, you know, just tonight we talked about a number of building projects that we're interested in pursuing. A lot of that is bond money, but some of it probably will not be. And, uh, and there's a whole list of items behind that. I think we need to be very cognizant of the maintenance of our buildings and, uh, and, and keeping up to date with that. And, and we are woefully behind right now. And um, so, you know, I, I don't see, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we're not in a deficit. As we all know, there was an issue where that uh, seemed to be a possibility. Um, and we had done a lot to curb spending and to do without a number of things that I, I still feel that we need. And, and so we're going to need to to make those kinds of purchases uh, eventually. But, um, but you know, so so right now, that, that's, as, as Mrs. King talked about, that's where we are with, with our numbers for 11-12. Uh, uh, Mrs. 13. Benson, and then we'll go to 12-13. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? OK, I, uh, I figure this is a good place to get this in. 
And in case you come, you say it's not on the agenda, I checked with the Secretary of State, and it is pertaining to the budget of 212, and you can speak about it. As chairman of the budget committee, I initiated a meeting with the superintendent so that I may be able to firmly address this and we may be able to go by state law. And it's not nobody working against anybody. This is state law. And I talked with him, and he mentioned to me about the deficit, and I asked one thing about the surplus. And the question I had related to the surplus, have all the things been taken care of for 212? He had a bit of trouble understanding that, and I had to explain to him, and I don't think it ever got through to him because he thought I was for confrontation and I was there for information so that we might come out on the top side, not with money, but with a plus against us that we obeyed one law. And we talked about the blind school of the deaf, whichever one it was, deaf school. It, it's the Rhode Island School of the Deaf, Mrs. Spencer. Yes, Rhode Island School of the Deaf. You know, when you've been in the state so long, and the two used to be combined, I can understand how this was put on people through the legislation and wasn't quite vented. And I'm sure all of us can understand that. So, all in general, I refused to let it be a confrontation meeting. It was strictly an informational meeting. It was a very good meeting, and since we're talking about 212, because we have to settle 212 before we can even look at 213. Because certain laws say we don't, we can't have a deficit, and we have a surplus. But one thing I was told, and I didn't have to have this told, told someone to tell me this, because I have constantly stressed it. You don't have a surplus when there are things needed in the district. And I was assured that all things were taken care of in the district. And this is the place where you bring that in at this conversation while we were talking about the budget and accepting the 212 budget. So, Mr. Merge, unless you have something else to do, I'd like We've already voted on it, but will we have to take a second vote, Mr. Mudge? Hold on. Or did you get enough? No, we don't need another vote. Mrs. Ovens. Oh, I'd like to have some comments here today. Oh, Mrs. Ovens. Asking. Just a very brief. I'm sorry. You go ahead, Mrs. Ovens. Already been taken care of for two twelve and thirteen, if I'm corrected. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Ovens. Thank you very much. Just a comment on um, and peripheral, peripherally related to the budget in that it has to do with the ESP contract and, and basically what went on here tonight at this meeting. Um, you know, no one has an easy job to do as a school committee member or as a superintendent or as a custodian. But you know what? We need to treat one another with mutual respect. That was not respectful tonight at all. And getting up and running up to this table and taking a picture and and just the behavior and bringing in people from outside of town, that type of behavior and the way it went down, it doesn't go over well with me. I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't, and I don't think most people in the town appreciate that behavior either. And I don't think it's a very good example for the students either. I understand how upsetting and how personal it is that this is a, their livelihood. I fully get that. But that does not excuse that behavior. And I think it's a poor, poor example. They should be ashamed of themselves. We're doing a job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Jay, I'm going to turn oh, it over to you for 2012-2013 uh, school budget. Excuse me, I Where had some comments on the 12 budget. Uh, I'm turning it over to Dr. Jay for 2012-2013 budget. Excuse me. 
I heard you, Mr. Mudge. You're not recognizing me? I have recognized you. No, I, I have some and comments. And you did comment on this. I have some comments related to what Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. King said. I, I'm going to ask uh, Mary to, King to talk about the 2012-2013 school budget. Uh, being that today is August 14th, uh, we are a little early in the 2013 year, um, but uh, people, departments are uh, placing their encumbrances. I am working with the controller uh, on taking a look at what we do know now uh, and trying to do some um, preliminary projections. And you will have reports uh, at the next meeting, the August 28th meeting, which is our, our usual uh, report out um, for the month of July. Thank you. Dr. Jay, do you have anything to say about the CIP, existing bond, future bond, or that we, have we already touched on base on that? We, we're all set on that. We've already touched on that. Okay. So we're getting down to policies. Uh, do you think have, uh, maybe some people on the school committee might have some comments? You've made some comments on both of those, Mr. Mudge. I, I don't think that we've – you just asked Dr. Jay again, and you didn't uh, – uh, I'm not going to go back to talk us. about CIP existing bond future bond. We already, he already talked about that. In his oh, he did. But report. did we? Did we have? We didn't have a chance to talk about that. The reason I'm I believe you did ask him some questions. During the superintendent's report. Yeah, you, you did comment during the superintendent's well, report. So you just I'm asked him. Well, all I'm trying to say, and I'm not picking on Dr. J, is you just asked him if he had any comments. Okay, and he talked about it before. I have some comments that I would like to address. And you to commented courteous, before to be courteous. Now, my comment is... I am. I'm moving on to policy. Boy, you are something. <laughs> oh, Thank you. God. Okay. So we're getting on to policy, on to the, the promotion retention policy. This is something that the policy committee has worked together with Dr. Humbert on. Uh, the, you can see in your, um, on your agenda as to what the, the changes have made in IKER. Um, I will note that there, there was a date change that was made um, this morning from February 1st to the end of the first semester. And so um, I just wanted to make sure that, that was noted. Do I have a motion on IKE and IKER? I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Lorraine, could we take a roll call vote, please? Uh, comments, please. Yes. Discussion? Yes, Go ahead, Mr. Please. Mudge. Uh, before we go ahead with these promotion and retention and, and regulations, uh, I would like to know if, in fact, uh, our, our uh, uh, teaching staff gets some input into these, uh, these uh, regulations. I mean, they're, they're pretty vital in terms of, uh, you know, actually uh, implementing this policy. And I would like to know if they have commented and, and have all the principals commented on this regulation, and I would like to get their comments and like to get them in, in writing if they have. I had one comment saying thank you, that it looked good from Louise Dinette, and the other comment I had was from Ruth Ann Logan making the suggestion that we change the date from February 1st to the end of the first semester, and that was what was made this morning. And yes, I sent what? it to them, and, and I did not receive any other comments. Did you, did you ask any from the teaching staff at all by any chance? No, we worked on it this summer. But, um, I mean, usually the, the principals are very involved so, with the retention. You know, Mr. Morris, this is work that administrators do. Excuse I don't, me. I don't, I don't think there are any, any teachers who are particularly interested in writing policy, you know. Uh, and, and when there are issues about particular policies that we have, trust me, people certainly come out of the woodwork to let us know what they think. Dr. So, Jay, I appreciate you know, your comments. Uh, you know, I, I don't feel like every every policy ever written uh, needs to be reviewed by the entire North Kingstown School Department community. Um, every everything has a place, um, and you know, administrators oversee uh, with the uh, with school committee, and and Mrs. Page has done a tremendous job in helping us with policy. Um, if you have a question about it, uh, happy to. Um, answer that question, but no, not every teacher in the school department has reviewed this policy and commented on it. We have had, we have run it by our principals, and they, and the comments they gave us, we just shared with you. I guess I, I didn't say you had to give it to every person. I just said, were well, they asked for comments? Yes. Okay. And is it for the teaching staff? That's all. 
Okay, well, why not? Why, why would you ask the teachings to comment? Well, they, they could also say no, like apparently seven principals did. Okay? No, no they, they all said they, well, only two commented, and one said it was fine, and the other one made a suggestion which we made. And the other ones didn't comment. Correct. Mrs. Benson. I just wanted to say that um, this is a policy. I haven't had a chance to read it all, but it seems like a lot of the things are carried over to the other. But I hope we bear this in mind. No person is better to equip and to tell you about the little day-to-day -day things related to bullying than the classroom teacher. And I'll care to step farther, bus drivers. So those are my comments. And would you take them down? Madam Secretary, did you really understand me? Yes, I took it down. Okay, did you understand me and get it correctly? I just wrote what you said. Say what? I wrote what you said. Yes, did you understand it? I'll she has it, Mrs. Benson. Mrs. Berglund I has it. She has when your comments. When I get comments. the minutes, Mrs. Page, I'm talking to her, and we have an And she's answered you twice. All right, so we have a motion on the floor and a second. Mrs. Berglund, could you take a roll call vote, please? What do you vote? Well, this is to approve policies oh, IKE and IKER. Richard Welsh? Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. Melvoy Benson. Yes. William Mudge. I'm going to abstain. Kimberly Page. Yes. Motion passes portable. The next two policies are the um, JBA and JBAR, and they are the teen dating and sexual harassment um, policies. They're updated policies from what we have, and these came down from the state. Uh, basically, they had us adopt a new bullying policy in June, and at that time they said that they would get to us before the end of the year. The updated, um, what used to be the bullying and teenage harassment policy, or um, teen dating, and they got it to us at the very end of June, and we didn't feel as if we were going to have enough time to update it before that last meeting in June. So. We have updated now. I know that they do want us to start off the year with this policy, and it separates the two. So we have the bullying policy, which is the, the one that we updated at the end of June, mm -hmm. and this is um, specifically for uh, teen dating and sexual harassment. So, um, so basically, I would make a motion that we approve JBA and JBAR. Second. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Mr. Munch. I've looked at these very closely, and I'm really concerned that and I feel that we should have both our police department and fire department to review these policies, uh, especially given the fact that they have certain responsibilities in dealing with some of these issues. And I think the police chief ought to, uh, uh, and fire chief ought to give uh, uh, comments to these things because I think there are very there, there are certain issues in here that go beyond the scope of what I think our committee has. For example, if there is Mr. a... Mudge, these came down from Peter Kilmartin's office. I know. They, weren't, they weren't something that we, we drew up. Well, they came I down from the state. That and so it really doesn't matter what the, the police chief said because Excuse he me? has to follow the law. The, the, I mean, this these, are, these are pretty much mandated that we adopt them. Well, you know, the, the Mr. Mudge, we, we have been in contact with We have a school resource me. officer, Excuse Mr. Mudge, me. who you, does a lot of work with us on bullying. Who authorized you? I know that he is all together right. with us on this, so. Well, you don't let anybody I, else. I'm going to let Dr. Dr. Auger finish up, and then you, if you would like to make any last comments about this policy, that is fine. Dr. Auger, did you want to finish up your point? I, 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 okay, I, 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 Mr. Mudge, now you have the floor. For me, that the police chief in this town shouldn't be reviewing this policy. We're talking about, for example, we had a policy in here that a girl got accosted in June. Okay? It wasn't even reported to the police and it wasn't even reported to the local uh, uh, police representative. Now that's a felony. And if there's a felony in here, the police should be involved. I'm not disagreeing with that, okay? Mr. Okay? And this should be reflected in this policy and it's not. I am not saying if a felony was committed, it needs to be reported to the police chief. What I am saying You're talking is about that felonies that being committed in these policies. You know, no, you know Bill, I don't recall felonies. you ever calling me and asking me about this and how the school department dealt with it. So I would check your facts on that. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, how about the so police report? So if you've got an issue like that, I, the police I, report I, report I think it's trial. incumbent on you to call right. the superintendent and find out what's going on. I tried to. Instead but, of waiting right. the whole summer to bring it up I in a school committee no. meeting. I, what kind of responsibility I, I, do you bear for that? All right, yeah. gentlemen. Well, I am going was to there a police you know, department? I, I, I'm, this is going out of line. I'm going to recognize Mrs. Avanzato. And then Mrs. Benson, you had your hand up too? And uh, Mrs. Benson. Mrs. Avanzato. Just very briefly, I would suggest that we... Uh, after we vote on these, you forward the, just forward them to the police department as a courtesy, and they can take a look. And uh, if there's any issues that they can bring to our attention, if there's a I didn't problem. understand the end of your suggestion because my suggestion may be moot if you repeat your. Wish. I just said forward the policies to the police department and, and the fire department if it's applicable, and let them take a look at it and make sure that there's nothing in there that's contrary to their understanding, and then. Okay, and I would assume that, may I add something to what you yes, said? Yes, Mrs. Benson, the next person I said I would um, call on, so go ahead. Part of what she says makes what I was going to say move to one section of it. And I thought I heard you say these came from the Attorney General. They did. So I would ask that uh, we not change them if they come from the Attorney General. We did not. General. That doesn't mean we can't hide. We would forward them to the police chief. And to the fire department. All right, and we can that do was that. An excellent suggestion. Do you have to make that in the form of a motion? No, I, 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 motion. Can, I can do I'll that. Make a, I'll make I can a make sure that, that is done. I like to we make have a motion. motion on the floor, so we need and to take care of the motion on the floor, and then I we can. The okay, we have a motion on the floor ready. Lorene, why don't we take a roll call vote? motion on the floor? Lorene is going to read it. Please. Forward lady. these policies to the police and fire department. She didn't make no, no, no. Motion My motion was to approve uh, oh, JBA motion. and JBAR. Oh, I'm sorry. I make to make a motion. There was a motion on but the floor. There's a motion on the floor. I know. I'd like to amend the motion. Okay. I'd like to amend the motion subject to sending this to the police department, as Mrs. Avanzano said, even if it's after the fact. Second. All right. All those in favor of the amendment say yes. Aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. No. Motion carries. Now vote on the main motion. Let me remind we do a roll call vote. Richard Welsh. Main motion. The main the motion policies. would be to approve the policies. And, yes. And then just forward them on the police. Linda Avanzato. Yes. And then forward. Don Boyd Benson. Yes, and I want to understand the motion. Would you read it back? Let's forward it out. Forward it. It's okay. It's to approve the policies and as amended and forward them to the police and fire department. That's what I thought. William Munch. Yes. Double yes. Because we can't afford William Munch. Yes. Kimberly Page. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. We've now come to new business. Um, the first item on our agenda is... Um, I have uh, a number of people in the community have come up to me and asked that if they funded a memorial uh, plaque for Doug Roth, um, if that could be put at the flagpole at the football field um, here at our stadium. So they are fully ready to fund it. Um, they have collected about 200 signatures that I've given Loreen that she can put in our packet for next time. Um, this is not an issue for voting tonight. Everything in new business is for discussion. Um, so I think we all served um, with Mr. Roth except for Mr. Mudge. Um, so um, I, I think you all know how I feel about it. I, I uh, and being a, uh, a good friend to Mr. Roth, I, I support this. I think it would be a, a good way to um, to give him a remembrance, but it's not necessarily something that we are studying any sort of a precedent about because it is privately funded, and it is something that has come from the community rather than from us. Um, and I know both of his children will be in high school this year, so I think it would be a nice way for them to be able to have something for their dad also. So, Mrs. Avanzano and then Mr. Welch. Yes. Um, first of all, I think a lot of credit should go to the group of the 200 people that raised the money to do this and um, and then come to us and ask us to do this. And I would agree very much with your comments about um, this not setting a precedent because you're not naming a stadium or something of that nature. And I think it would be very appropriate to have this at the high school with his children there. Um, 
as some of you may know, Doug and I didn't always agree on everything. We had a few little arguments, but um, aside from that, though, we made peace, and Doug uh, was very passionate about this school system and about all the kids in it, and he really, really cared about that, and um, he really did. I mean, his whole heart was in it, so uh, I would totally support this, and I think it's a nice gesture, and I hope, I hope that it makes his kids feel like there's a part of him that's still here you know, at the school. Mr. Welchin and Mrs. Benson. I would just ask that uh, there be some kind of uh, review of what they plan on doing. Uh, and my suggestion would be uh, you as chair and uh, Dr. Roger as superintendent just to review it so that it doesn't become something, not that I would expect it to be, that would be too grandiose and et, et cetera, but would, would do, do what, what they're looking to do in, in a moderate format. I think they've already suggested what they might do. Yeah, as far as I know, they've suggested a plaque or something like that. So yeah. pretty, yeah. you know, Just, just so you have some review and approval of what they're, they're doing. That's yeah, all. Yeah, that's a good one. Mr. Mrs. Benson? Uh, Mr. Webb just stated it quite eloquently what I was going to say. I think we should have a review of it. We all know who served with him, where his heart was. And as you mentioned, you don't want to make this <clears throat> a permanent thing. So, Mr. West, if you ever go to the Veterans Cemetery, there's a little one about the size of this that they put on the trees that it doesn't take up too much room and all of them will be like that from eternity for eternity if it was you Linda, Dr. OJ all of them will be in that same form so that's a very good idea to review them and come back to us with a design I think it's a nice thing to do I wasn't really asking for us to get involved in it I just think we'll if we, if there is some review of it, then I would think that we would have to play a hand in. I think that the um, the group that is putting it forward would be fully ready to mind. to make sure that that we see something before that you know, we just give and blanket I don't approval. Feel yes, the citizens would mm -hmm. remind, would uh, object to that. It was a wonderful idea, mm -hmm. Mr. Mudge. In fact, I did sign the uh, the uh, petition for that so that it could be heard, but I have a lot of con concerns. Okay, in fact. Uh, Doug and I also had some, some issues, and prior to uh, the Porsche, we uh, had many, 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 many discussions, and uh, 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 that's why I signed that. Now, with that said, I think we need to look at specifically what our policies are with regard to this, because when I look back, I ask myself, who was Hiram Davis? Who was Ed Pratt? Who was Jimmy Baker? Who was so many other people in town? Jack Higby gave dedicated, dedicated service beyond the, you know, so forth and so on. So, is this to say that that we couldn't get somebody to come forward? Hiram Davis was a superintendent here for 40 or 50 years, or some darn thing, and Ed Pratt at the high school for 30 some years. If we wanted to start putting memorials plaques and things up like that, shouldn't we consider that as well? Because to me, unless we can establish some policy here, you know, uh, as much as I, 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 and I did sign this petition, that I would not support that. So we need to get a policy and make sure we're abiding by that. Uh, Doug, he served us for, what, three, four years and passed away, and, and I certainly understand that. But there's also been a lot of other people here in this town that have served this town faithfully. And uh, uh, so I think we really make, got to make sure we're not opening up Pandora's box, okay? And if, and, uh, uh, and if Doug was here today, I, I'd, I'd tell him the same thing, and I think he would agree. So we ought to really consider this very deeply, and not as an individual item, but as to its applicability to many other people. 
Yeah, I think you're right, Mr. Mudge. Um, it is the sort of thing that was one of the things when the, the committee uh, or the group uh, first came towards me, I said, you know, we want to make sure that we distinguish this from all the other good people who have served here, not only in the school committee, but within the North Kingston schools. And so that was one of the things that I said to them is that we don't always have people who approach us um, when they want um, to recognize someone. I said, so if you could get, and I gave her, uh, I must admit, I gave a figure off the top of my head. I said, if you could get me somewhere over between 100 and 200 signatures, I said, I think that would send a message that this was something that not just one person wanted, but a larger group. And so that was when they, they came to me um, right before, um, well, at the, our last meeting in June, yep. and they, they gave me the signatures. Uh, I do think we should have some sort of a naming policy. We had drawn one up um, before Susan M. Hensler Quinesset was renamed, but then because that ended up being kind of a controversial issue, it was the sort of thing that that policy was put back on hold. So it is certainly something that we can bring up with the policy again, although this wouldn't be naming anything after Mr. Roth. This would merely be putting up a plaque. But I, I do, would say that I think that our school committee should entertain um, if somebody else came forward as a remembrance. Uh, so I'll, I'll take a couple more questions, and then um, Mrs. Benson and Mr. Mudge. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mrs. Benson. Uh, my question was, you used the figure 120. So does that mean that if the Baker family gets 120, that's the most recent one? And I think we have really let time go by on us, Mr. Mudge, with Hiram Davis, because incidentally he hired me. And um, Jackie, they hadn't gone yet, has he? No, these were just examples. So, well, and, and there are many examples. I was just saying, to bring out my point, mm -hmm. if you use the figure of 120, would that be the norm that you would need and the family would have to contact you? Why don't we throw that around in the, in the policy committee? I mean, that's a good question. I don't know what a figure should be. Uh, you know, I don't think that I feel I comfortable here tonight just to say this is the number. Um, I guess. Uh, would we simplify it and say the family approach you and then you bring it back, uh, you let the school committee decide? Because we are getting into a terrible curve here. And Doug did do a lot for the school, but there's a lot of difference between five and 45. One of the things is, um, you know, we can check into um, the Rhode Island, Mr. Welch has uh, just written me a note here, he said, why don't we check with the Rhode Island Association of School Committees to see what other districts um, have as, as part of their policy um, in, you know, in looking towards the future as to what we want to do with that. So we are not capable of uh, getting our own things by no, our just, citizens. No, that's not the point at all. It's just to, to see what others do. And, uh, and, then, we, and we can make a decision ourselves. Yeah, we can make a decision about Mr. Roth, although tonight we are not making a decision. We can make a decision about Julie Baker, who was the first. We can, but I'm saying Mr. Mudge has proposed that we have a, a policy. And I'm saying if we want to go forward with a policy, we can make sure that we take a look at what everybody else has. Mr. Mudge. Yeah, look at it. it you know, I, 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 this, I know this is a sensitive issue, but I want, you mentioned uh, the Quinnesset Elementary School uh, being named from this uh, uh, Sue Hensler. I had the very same comments, the very same comments. It wasn't about the person, it was about the process. Okay? So I think it uh, needs to be looked at. Uh, uh, and for example, suppose we got, well, heck, the Baker family's in here, they've been here for 60 years, Jim's done everything. Suppose they come in and want to put up the, Steal it. I won't. I won't even say that now. A own plaque, not a plaque, but a standing statue of Jimmy Baker someplace. Okay, and I think Mr. 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 Well saluted to that too. I mean, then what? Is, what is that? What's the next step? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a touchy issue, but I think it needs to be addressed. Okay. Uh, I think we're all in agreement on that. Before we give any permission to anything, because you stated a set number for. I think what I'm hearing from the committee is that you you will move forward for the next step of next time we'll make a decision on the Doug Roth plaque. 
but the committee wants for future things to have some sort of a policy, and so that would be something that um, we need to, to take a look at from the policy committee. No, I'm not comfortable with that. I'd rather see a policy before we, 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 we vote on this thing myself. And that can be discussed. We do have um, a couple more things on our agenda, and it is almost 10 o'clock. So, um, Mr. Um, Welch, you had put on here the charge for change for the facility subcommittee, and you would also put composition of the school committee and the new health care task force. Are any of those um, things that you want to take in particular, um, you know, one rather than the other, and we will probably be tabling anything else? Actually, I think the, the three of them are not that urgent. They could wait until the next meeting. I would just ask that they be moved up on the list so that we could get them handled. Okay. You know, I, I, I will make, if I could, just one comment. Uh, I spoke in front of the town council regarding um, th their decision to put the, the makeup of the school committee before the voters. I don't believe, I don't feel that they have a true understanding of the amount of work that the school committee has to do um, and, sh and should do. Uh, it's far more than the town council has to do. Um, the, you know, we, we amount to 70% of the town's budget. Um, and, you know, it's very critical, the decisions that we're making uh, at every single meeting. And it takes a lot of concentration from all of the members uh, to do this, and I, I just don't see the advantage. And I mentioned this at the, at the town council meeting. I said it isn't for economics because cutting down two members only saves you forty-eight hundred dollars a year. And when you got a fifty-eight million dollar budget, uh, forty-eight hundred dollars uh, uh, doesn't even show up on the percentage chart. Um, it, it sounds more like the town council is is hell bent to uh, do a couple of things, and one of them is to take attention away from themselves and what they haven't been able to accomplish and divert that onto the school committee once again. Um, but, you know, I, I have no problem with the public voting this. I just, I don't know that anything will be accomplished um, to the positive um, by changing the makeup of the school committee. And by the way, the uh, Charter Review Committee uh, voted four to two not to make the change. So, you know, it, they, they didn't take the, the recommendation from the Charter Review Committee. Mr. Mudge. Yes, I'd like to uh, I agree with everything uh, Mr. Wells says, but I, I certainly support that, Mr. Wells. What I would do is I would recommend that the school committee send a letter, okay, to the council formally, okay, uh, recognizing the efforts, whether anyone likes what I do or I don't or dislike what everybody else does, it's a separate issue. For example, one only has to look at the size of the Don school, school Committee Policy Manual, the School Committee Policy Manual that we have to follow. That's in addition to the Town Charter. That's in addition to Rhode Island General Law. We have to take eight courses, okay, with the State of Rhode Island, okay, or RISC or, or Brian and, and so forth and so on. We have a numerous amount of, of, of committees we're on. We're dealing with you, a, a couple unions, the union problems. We're dealing with uh, many uh, personnel issues, many more than them. The, ch the, ch the you know, kids' issues in terms of the grievances and the, so forth and so on. Uh, we should put together a list of all the committees that we have. Every committee, send it to the council and send a, you know, basically let's tell them what our job is, okay? And I would recommend and make a motion that we send a letter, okay, from this committee to the council as such. And I would also recommend we put an advertisement in the paper and say the same. Okay, we have Mrs. Avanzano and then Mrs. Benson. Member, this is just for a discussion, so we're not making any motions on these tonight. But go ahead, Mrs. Avanzano. I would agree with the comments that were just made. I was at the town council meeting when they discussed this issue. Um, and just a couple quick things. The council kind of took exception to the fact that a couple school committee members said we weren't really told about this issue. I mean, our chair, Kim, you sent an email to people, but it was, you know, I don't even really read my email that much in the summer. We were away and, you know, I mean, I read it, but it's spotty. It's not like, and, and I think that's the same for a lot of people in the summertime. So I didn't realize the issue was even, in a, and, no, and a lot of school committee members didn't know until it was actually up 
before us, I would have thought that it says it's a direct vote on our public body that we would have received a more formal communication from the town council, which was my feeling on it. I, th I think that should have been done. But they had a very interesting conversation at the council level about this. The reason they gave for doing this, for, for cutting down to five members, I just thought was just a, not a valid reason, not really an appropriate reason. They just, well, the committee doesn't get along. They bicker, so we need to cut down to five members. Well, how do you figure? How's that going to work? Like yeah. five people can't, can't bicker yeah. as well as seven. Uh, I said, the only reason that I initially felt that five members would be better is because seven members are just a lot of people, and it's kind of unwieldy. And if every person wants to be heard on every topic, that's really a lot of time it takes for meetings. Not regard, without regard to who's on the committee, that's just a lot of time. But I changed my mind completely on this topic after thinking about the amount of work and some of the things that Mr. Mudge just said, what we have to follow, and also all the subcommittees. Um, and the vote went down three to two at the council um, to send it to the charter review to change it, to send it to the ballot to be voted on by the people, uh, whether or not they want five or seven people on their school committee. But hopefully the word gets out in the press that there are good reasons for seven people to be on a school committee. Um, and. And the other reason, the, the arguing and bickering, can certainly happen amongst five people as easily as it can happen amongst seven. So that would be my point. Mrs. Benson. Uh, I won't go over what you said about didn't realize it. I didn't know it because I would have been at council meeting because yeah. for years we have been talking about it, and I think we have school committee members sitting here now that wanted district representation. Yes. I'm always for citizens' participation. And when we had the original seven, sometimes you have to go backwards before you go forward. When we had the original seven, I can name you at least three subdivisions that wasn't incorporated then, a part of our town. It went to that with the explosion of the military era and the building of Forest Park before Quinnette. Talking about districts? Uh, uh, voting uh, districts is what you're talking about? Uh, no, I'm talking Within about the, the seven members. Oh, the seven members, I'm sorry. Uh -huh, the seven members. Okay. Let me make it clear. Some of you have I didn't know that. a hard time. And I don't think you have the hard time. I think it's just that uh, uh, you're not showing that you're versatile in understanding when I talk. I didn't know what you were talking about. Uh, and when we are on a subject, Sorry. why would I go from one to the other? But at any rate, I wasn't aware that they discussed uh -huh. that. at any rate, we cannot. Is something wrong with this page? <coughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, anyway, I would have never been for changing it to five. So I would suggest that we write to town council again and ask them could they replace it on the agenda. It's a done deal. Yep. It's too late. It's too late. I don't think nothing is a done too deal. Too late. It had to be on the ballot by August 8th. It's on the ballot. Well, we can wait for the next ballot in the spring. Oh, no. Well, it's on the ballot, so it's not like they're going to take it all up or down. Well, we can work to let the people know what it is. That's what we need to do. I think that's what I suggested. part of the reason to have this discussion today. Yes. Uh -huh. Wait just a minute. I'm going to finish. Uh, we can let people know what it means to participate. Because I think you were driving engine behind the fact that we would have a district representation on the on the uh, council at one time on you mr Watt. and i, totally thought, I believe in it yeah. uh-huh and i thought that was very bold because where i live when they made the district and where you used to live when they made the district it wasn't as many it might surprise you mr west to know that we have <coughs> two over 260 residents within the Saga Avenue to show acres perimeter. Because what used to be summer, they are making it into winter, and they're going for two families. So these people need to participate in government. So that was what I had to say. 
All right. I know, Mr. Mudge, I do see your hand up. Um, my question would be from the committee. We, we go on past our 10 o'clock. Would you like to have this on another agenda to talk about oh, this some more? I would like to make a motion that we draft a letter and that, by the way, everyone, everyone. It's just for discussion. Okay. So we don't but, make a, okay. but everyone on the committee sign it. Okay? Because regardless of the personalities or whatever, there's one hell of a lot of work that has to be done. That's the message. Okay, and also, I'm appalled by one council member saying, okay, well, this is what they do in another district. Well, you know something, we ought to go back and look at some of those other districts. And if you did like I did, you'll find out that I think three or four of them exceeded their budget and went in debt, including East Providence, okay, including uh, West Warwick, including uh, Cranston. Excuse me, I think it was uh, Winsock, I'm not sure. But if you look at those, you'll see that they had very small bodies. And then what you won't see also is some other districts, like, for example, Newport, where they have a nonpartisan election, le electoral process. Okay? So there's a whole bunch of factors in here. But just to say, and maybe Mr. Welsh is right, it being vindictive against him, Mrs. Arbenzano, or myself for that matter. Okay? is totally, I don't know what the word is, it's, 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 it's. Changing the number on the committee, is that what I, I, yeah, changing number, it's, 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 it's vindictive, okay? And it's not doing any good for the community by doing that, okay? All right, so I'm hearing that this committee would like to have this on as a voting item on the next agenda so that we can um, take some action from that. You sent a letter on consensus. We could. If, you, if you're not interested in having it as a voting item, we can, we can as a consensus, we can oh, see, send a letter point and is, yeah, circulate, point is, circulate a letter. I, but I, I think we ought to probably have the letter at least on for approval by the school yeah, committee. Yeah, because I, I, I sent a letter because I got the, 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 the meeting notice, you know, and I, I caught it and I sent in my comments. I didn't complete them all because I didn't have all the numbers of committees we had, you know, to serve. We didn't have all the other things, you know, that that I, I, you know, wasn't really complete. But I think we ought to expand on the task with the school committee and how extensive it is. All right, we can do that. And you know All right, so to adjourn. Adjourn. we have a motion to adjourn and we have this. a second. Before we adjourn, um, Before we adjourn I had my Say it quickly, out. Mrs. Benson, yes. We've I'm all talked. say this. If you're at home looking at the body language of some of the people up here, and when others go to town, such a disrespect, you can see why certain people want certain things. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion on the floor and a second. All those in favor of adjourning the meeting, say aye. 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 All those opposed, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Once again, I get lucky.